everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really cute little oriental trinket box. Um, it's got these beautiful papers, um, which are the Floral Fusion by First Edition. Um, and it was the papers that really kind of made me think to do this project. Um, I have done one very similar and it was part of my Mother's Day series last year. It was a bigger one, um, but it didn't have the feet. So I've added these really nice, again, kind of Asian oriental inspired feet. I've got the papers on the back there and I've also, if you can see closely here, finished all the edges with these little metal um, corner details which again I'll talk all through. Held together with pretty ribbon and then as you open it up inside you've got that same paper on the back and on the bottom there. So this is a really special gift box, be beautiful you know to um, use to wrap some lovely jewellery in, something really special, or just to have on the bedside. Because what I would maybe suggest is if you wanted to have this as a, a you know, everyday kind of little storage um, box, I'd probably say don't use the ribbon. Because once you add this uh, paper on top of your card, the paper on here, plus these little metal pieces, it does become, if I just sit it down, quite a heavy weighted lid. So it will, you know, open and close quite freely um, and it gets a really nice you know flush closure as well when it is um, closed <laughs> so yeah really and it's very very easy again I always try to bring you tutorials that are you know that looks like you know that is like a, a really big job but it's not it's very very straightforward so let's crack on and make it so we've got here the floral fusion um, little six by six paper pack um, Again, I live in China, so as soon as I saw this one, I just knew I'd get a lot of use out of it, and it's got beautiful, you can see all these lovely patterns here, and I'll just quickly flick through. That one I love, and it's like a fabric paper with those gorgeous birds. And that one there again, it's got like a shimmer to it. You can just kind of and pick it up there. there. The single-sided at the back, I mean, that's gorgeous. So, so pretty. So that is the pack. Again, I'll share all the links. Um, these are, I picked these up actually a while ago and I left them um, at my mum's. A few different bags of different ones. These are just the silver corner, um, decorative corners. So I will share all the links because I got these off of eBay. They were very inexpensive um, and you get, I don't know how many sets it is, but again, I'll share all the links. And then I've just got these tiny little um, pliers. Great for your craft room just to kind of keep in your stash. They're part of a set. Again, these are my mum's, so I'll, again, I'll find out something similar for you. Um, just a corner punch. That's leftover scraps from the red card here. This one's more of a pinky tone, um, but I'll show you what you'll be doing with them. Just other little tools, get rid of all of this. Now the ribbon, one thing I would say is you want a ribbon that's really, th really thin. So you see this one here, it's very, very thin. Um, and then it's about half an inch thickness because the one I used on this box here is this velvet ribbon which again if I put it on its side it's thicker and that's the only thing that if I bring it up a bit closer here at the bottom you see it's slightly just a little bit lumpy there um, and you know I pick up these little kind of um, you know flaws they are uh, to me again to anybody else probably wouldn't notice it but what I would suggest is just make sure I'm going to use this thinner one today and I won't get that so if you've got any velvet or kind of thicker ribbons I'd say don't use them for this project um, okay, some measurements. Right, so I've got my ribbon, got one piece of 12 by 12, which is going to be um, what you'll need for the main um, box here. So this is all separate. You need a piece of 12 by 12 for that. Then you need a piece of uh, four and a half by ten and a half, and this is the case that's going to wrap around. And then you need two pieces of four and a quarter by four. And these will be for the top of the lid and then the inside of the lid. So when you lift it up, you get that print. And when it's down, that's on top. And this is to go inside the box. Um, optional piece, I guess. This is three and seven eighths of an inch squared. Okay. So first of all, we will do our main Box. This is some really here. simple score lines. This piece actually comes slightly over 12 inches, but it's fine. Um, so you want to score at 2 inches, 4 inches, 8 inches, and 10 inches. Then rotate your card and do exactly the same again. So 2 inches, 4 inches, 8 inches, and 
10 inches. So this is going to be a reinforced box. So that's our 4x4 four four base. And these are going to be our 2 inch um, reinforced edges. So again, it, this is a really, really strong, solid box. So it's really, really good. Oh, my focus has disappeared. What is going on? Give it a minute. There we go, we're back again. Okay, so that's scored. Let's just get all the scoring done while I've got the scoreboard out. So with this piece here, scoring along the 10 and a half inch side, you want to score at four and a quarter. And then you want to pull that card out ever so slightly from the edge here. Okay, so you're revealing the base of your scoreboard, but you're not quite coming up to that one eighth of an inch notch. Once you've done that, you want to then score at six and three eighths of an inch. This just allows us to wrap this piece around this box. If we didn't pull it out that little bit, you wouldn't get a nice um, kind of case around it. So that's that one there. And then that is, oh, and then a little bit more scoring to make the feet, but you need the pieces that we're going to cut from this piece. So I'll go through those. So we will need the scoreboard again shortly. Okay, so first of all, let's just burnish this piece here, which is easy. And again, like so. And then this is optional, but I just find with something like this, especially if you're going to be keeping it, it's always good to corner punch the edges just so they don't get tatty over time. So I'm just going to round off all four of those corners. Okay, so that's that piece done for the minute. We'll stick everything on later. And then with this bigger piece, again, lots of bits on here. I just want to go over all of those score lines. And then we can do some cutting. Okay, so now that's all of my score lines burnished. So now just get yourself some sharp scissors and we're just going to cut now to make this a reinforced box so it's just like I do with any other reinforced style so any side facing you first of all you're going to cut all the way down the first score line going past this score line and going down to the second score line okay so you're cutting like so then rotate it and you're going to cut this whole piece out like so bring it back around to where it was originally and then you want to cut down the next score line again go past this score line and down to the second score line okay like so be as neat as you can and then just rotate and cut along this one and remove it so what you've now created is this tab okay what you want to do now is just notch off the edges there so I'm just taking off cutting in from about one eighth of an inch down on an angle if I just lie that flat you can see now what I've just done there and then what I also do is just on the outer ones here just take a little slither and um, because it's going to be a reinforced box this outer piece is going to be folding back in on the box just by removing this little slither or even that kind of lumpy bit from the score line it will just give you a really nice clean finish on your box so you can see there just the amount I'm just taking off tiny little bits okay then go along to this side and you're just mirroring what you've just done so again cutting all the way down down past that first score line to that second one and then again this one all the way down like so rotate and again Cut that whole piece out and then cut that piece off and then again just tidy up your edges so this top one I'm just taking a little slither off and then again just kind of cutting in and then across so you just got little notches taken out like so and again just take a little bit off of that edge that is what I've got on that end. Then you want to rotate the whole thing and do exactly that again down here. Okay, so that is now the shape that you should have. Okay, just push it down so you can see the little notched bits. You should have four of these and then four edges like so. Keep all of these little pieces, well, I say little pieces, keep all the squares. They're great scraps, they're great for punching through your little punches <laughs> um, and for little die cuts, but they're also going to be, we're going to use some of them for our feet. 
So I'm just gonna get rid of those little tiny bits. Okay, so now we can put this all together. So just use some, I'm using some tacky glue here. And so this is the base, okay? And these are all of our sides. These pieces here, these little tabs, we're gonna glue and stick inside. So you just wanna go along. And I think this one's just got some glue. There we go. Take that off. Just put a thin amount. If, you, if it's a good strong glue, like a Tombow, this Alina stuff, you don't need much at all. But you just want to focus, make sure you're getting it right up to the outer score line there. Okay, and then fold it down and fold it in and then bring that edge up. So it's basically forming the corner of your box. Okay, this stuff dries almost instantly. I'm just going to turn it on its side there just so I can apply some pressure, like so. And then with the opposite one before that dries, bring that in. And again, making sure that you get a really nice, neat edge there. And again, just pop that on its side, like so. So that's what you should have, is one end of your box. Then with these two now, again, just apply some glue, but focus on the, the very outer part here. Do that one first, just bring that in, like so. So now you have a box, so that's a normal non-reinforced box, but now we've got these pieces. They are basically all going to fold in, and because you've taken off those tiny little bits from the side, you get a really neat join in there, in each corner. And it's just all, by doing these kind of little extras, um, it just overall gives it a, real, a much more of a finished look and a real professional look. So um, it's just little hints and tips along the way just to help you there. So now just fold it out slightly. You don't need, again, a lot of glue. It's just to keep it in place, just like so and then fold that in, pop it on its side, and with your bone tool, you can't see this bit, unfortunately, but I'm just pushing it down and just spreading out that glue, just to make sure it's all there in place. Again, those of you that follow me regularly will know exactly what you do here, you'll be whizzing through this part. But now, I've got a really nice crisp corner here, and this glue dries so hard that that will, as you can see here, it's now a solid, side. So again, it's a really good quality little box. So again, a little bit of glue, just enough to keep it in place, less is more, and then pop it on its side. And again, so go around and do that on again, all those sides. So there is a really nice box. So that is now all finished. So what we can do now is keep that to one side and we'll move on to our case. So this is basically, this is going to sit inside. You can see if I lift this up, you're going to get a really nice frame on the base there and then that will be coming down like so. So what we want to do is turn it up, so this is the, the top, the front, grab one of our pieces here. Now the top one, before we stick it down, we've got to add our ribbon. So I'm just going to just cut this in half and just tell you roughly. I always tend to cut a bit more because I hate the amount of times I've done this part and stuck the ribbon in and found the ribbon to be too short. It's 16 inches, 14 will probably be enough, but this is just how I do it. I'd rather have a bit more than, than not enough. So the ribbon's gonna sit on top here, and then this is gonna then stick and sandwich in between, like so. And you're gonna have this nice little 1 8 of an inch border around. So first of all, I'm gonna put some glue on the out um, underneath there just to hold it in place. I'm going in probably about one inch. This is why you need that thinner ribbon. And again, make sure it's nice and centered there. If you wanna get your ruler and kind of just put a little pencil mark where the middle is there, but I'm just eyeballing that. And then I'm gonna put more glue on top. Don't go right to the edge, because obviously you've got one eighth of an inch there that is not gonna be, um, is gonna be exposed. And then just go around again don't put too much, but just enough around the very outer part. This is a, a, a glossy card, so I just want to make sure it does. It's the same as what I used before, so I know it'll stick fine, but probably putting more on than I would. But it's thin layers, it's not thick, thick, thick. And then I'm just going to put an extra bit just where that ribbon is going to go, okay? 
and then very carefully and neatly you just want to start sticking that in place like I said make sure you've got a really nice it's always good to use the wet glue because you've got that wiggle room so even if it is slightly off you've got time to move it around and then just with your bone tool just go around don't go sideways with your bone tool always keep it flat and that way you won't have any kind of lines any you won't leave any impressions in your paper I mean this is pattern so you don't see it anyway but I'm using the whole flat part of it there just to spread out the glue and just make sure you really get it you know all over that ribbon like so okay so I'm happy now that that's all stuck down and as I said this glue dries very hard flip it over with your other piece I've already um, again rounded off the edges there but don't worry if you don't have one it will still look nice and again just stick that one down underneath. okay so that's that now all stuck down while I've still got my glue here I'm just going to grab my box and just with that square piece that you've got just again stick that down inside and because it's a four by four box this is cut at three and seven eighths of an inch but because you've got the reinforced sides of the box this will literally fit perfectly in the base you won't have a frame with this one it fits perfectly inside so it covers the whole area you can use the flat end of the ruler if you want I'm just using my finger here just to make sure but now you can see that that covers the whole base of that box. So now we've got that all done, this is done, and then it's all, you can see now how quickly it's all coming together. And soon you'll have it done. So next we will do the little edges here. Now again, this is completely optional. The box, you can see how lovely it looks without. So don't worry, but I just thought this is nice to keep this as a, if you want to keep it as a trinket box. Like I said, you won't need that ribbon. So again, you can decide. There's lots of different ways to make this suit you. Um, so I've got four of them there. And do this before you stick it onto there, just because if you do go wrong with this and you've already stuck it onto there, you've lost this box as well as this. Whereas if you put these on and it goes wrong, you've only got to redo this bit rather than redo the box as well. And what I would say is if you've never used these before, because I know this is the first time I'm using them in a tutorial, but I have used these on projects, you know, over years, um, just practice on some scrap card. These are inexpensive, so you can, you know, you can afford to kind of lose a couple before you actually put it onto a, a proper project. So these are curved ones. You can get the, the pointy um, corner, um, but these are curved, which is why I've corner rounded um, my edges there. So this is when you need your pliers. Now, what you want to do, so I'll do the, the base ones first. Obviously, this is going to be sitting like so. You just pop it in the corner there. And then literally, I start from the middle and just squeeze it and pinch it between the tweezer, the tweezers, the pliers, until it literally grips onto that card. Like so. See there. So again, just do that other one, just to show you. So pop it in, kind of hold it. I'm kind of holding it, my finger underneath, holding it in place. But once you push it with the pliers, you're pushing it in anyway. Start from the middle, squeeze down, and then just work your way. Out. If you want to put um, some tissue between, because some of the pliers might leave an impression, this leaves a slight impression, but I actually wanted it to look a little bit more tarnished and not so perfect and shiny. But again, I don't know how well it's picking it up here, but can you see now? That's perfect, that's solid, that's not coming out at all. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat those on the top ones here. Okay, so now that's all done. It just it just completely transforms your project by using these and um, now I've got them all again because I did leave them at my mum's I'm going to be incorporating them into a lot more projects and I've got a few more journals and stuff in the pipeline and these look great um, to kind of protect the corners of your books and stuff all that hard work we do it's nice um, if we can you know protect it that little bit more so now we need to stick this down onto the base but before we do that we've got to put the other bit of ribbon in because this is now going to sit down here with the box over the top. So just as we did with the lid, 
I'm going to just pop some glue just on the ribbon to just keep it in place for the minute. Again, about an inch in and making sure it's nice and centered across the bottom, like so. And then I'm just going to splodge some more glue just on top of that. But again, don't go right to the end. And then just cover the base again, making sure you get right up to the edges because you don't want these lifting. And this dries clear as well, so again, it's an all round good glue to okay. use. And again, you then want to sit that on your base. And again, you've got time to wiggle it, move it around until you're happy. Bring up the back, use that as your kind of guide because you want to push this right up to the back there like I'm doing. And then just make sure you've got an even side border. And once you're happy that it's in place, you can just really make sure you stick it all down. Okay, so now a couple of other options are completely up to you. You can now stick down the back, which is what I did do on this one. Just, you know, I just think that obviously gives it more of a jewelry box kind of look, like so. And you could put a mirror on the back here. You can buy the um, craft mirrors, um, which would sit nicely there. So if you imagine that's got no ribbon and it's got a mirror there, that's just a nice little bedside little box. Um, and that's how it looks without it. So again, it still looks nice with it not stuck down, but I am going to stick it down because I want to. Um, and the feet are completely optional as well. So there's lots of bits that you can not add to it and it still looks lovely. So don't worry if you don't have the metal, don't worry if you don't want to do the feet, it will still be a beautiful box. And I will link the Mother's Day one that I've done because that is bigger. Um, I think it's got an it's either got a six by six base or an eight by eight base. This is four by four um, and it's the same process. So again, just get my bone folder there and just, again, I'm using the whole flat edge a bit there, just so you don't get any lines in your card. Okay, so there you go. I think that is an absolutely gorgeous. I just bring that up. I think it's stunning. And you can go to town on the top, you could put lots of um, those uh, Fomarinian flowers, die cuts, you could have a nice circle die cut and a sentiment on there. You know, I wanted these plain. You can see that I have got a lot of um, ribbon, but I just pr would prefer to have more than less. I'm not going to go too tight yet because the base is still setting, but just roughly um, put my bow in like so and then I can just cut off I'll cut it off there just so I can still play around a little bit more okay so that is where we are now with the box now with your little scrap pieces here that I said to keep so these are all two by two squares what we want to do now is tidy them up a little bit although I've got one there that's fine and I think that one's okay so I'm gonna keep those ones oh moving the whole map there that's better um, and then what you want to do is grab your scoreboard. So I'm actually going to be cutting them in half. So um, I'm just going to score along one of the sides at one inch. You only need two pieces and then score another one at one inch. Then turn it on the other side and you want to score at every half inch. So half, one, one and a half and then obviously two is the end. So again here you score down the one, then rotate it and score at half an inch, one inch, and one and a half. Okay. And these are just, I just wanted a quick way to make some feet and them look in keeping with that oriental feel. You just then want to cut down that one inch score line, like so, and then burnish all the score lines. Okay, so that's what you should have. Now what you're going to do is fold it up like so and then this one is going to fold over to form a triangle and it's that piece here that we're going to glue so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue in oh do it like so I'm just trying to keep it close to the camera so you can see because it's a little bit fiddly and it's so small so I've just put glue on the fourth rectangle on the right hand side here the very end Bring that one up to form your triangle shape and then just bring that one over, okay? And just hold it in place there until that all sets. And what I find is if you've got your stylus, where the glue's setting on this side, pop that down flat and put your stylus in and you can just push 
See there what I'm doing? Just putting some pressure down on the side that's got the glue. Okay. And then you will have a little foot and it's the side that's been glued, this side here, that's got two layers of card. So already that's gonna become really strong and that's the piece that we're gonna to stick to the base of our box to create that look for our feet. Which again, I'll just bring it up here, you can see. They're really, really strong feet. So I'm just gonna carry on and do that for the other three okay, pieces. Okay, so now I've got my four little triangle feet. So now we just need to stick them onto the base. Okay, so you're gluing down the side that's already been glued together. So the side, the edge that's got the two pieces of card stuck together, you wanna to put another little bit of glue on the back of that. And then just try and eyeball it so that you are sitting it so it is matching the corner of the box here. So you can see there, it's coming in about a quarter of an inch in from the side and the top there in the corner. So that's one like so. Get the other one. So it's just a way to kind of even make these bits with just normal craft supplies. You know, you don't have to go out. You can buy little metal feet but you tend to just get packs of four, eight, or 12, and I think they're quite pricey. But I think if you buy these little metal pieces, which are inexpensive, they give you that kind of um, ooh, real um, quality finish and look to your projects, but without costing an arm and a leg. And then these little feet, I think, look equally nice, and they're just made out of card. So then just mirror them on the opposite end. Again, the same kind of distance from the edge and apart from each other as well. And then that last one, just go in like so. so. Now I'm just gonna turn it upside down so it would just have the natural weight of the box just to keep it all in place. Just put a little bit of pressure on, just to kind of, you don't want them sliding around, but just to get them, but once now I can put lots of pressure on that. That will hold, you know, lots of jewelry. It would hold a nice, what other thing could you, I'm trying to think what nice things to gift in here. Those nice tinned candles, because you can get the ones that are probably no more than two inches high. Um, but it's mainly for jewellery. I think it's a really beautiful piece. And, um, you know, just to put those little knickknacks that we have sometimes on our bedside um, and sideboards and stuff. Um, but I think that is pretty much it now. So you can see underneath, just put it on the side. And obviously that's that one all done there. So there you have it. I absolutely adore these. I think they're beautiful. Um, I'm really pleased with them and they're super easy to make. And I edit very little out of my videos. All I edit is the gluing, the, you know, you don't need to see me glue every single piece or fold every single piece. So it's a pretty quick project as well. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit the thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.